Meet the Anvil S7C Hornet Mark II, the newest fighter in the Star Citizen lineup. So getting started with the tour here, um, I did go ahead and choose the blue. I didn't much care for the extra livery that you can get with the War Bond. The blue to me just looks much, much better overall. And you can also see I've already upgraded the guns and stuff on this model with the, got the front turret, the top turret, adding the AD48 uh, or four, four Bs, whatever they are, I can't remember right off hand, as well as the other guns on the front there. But looking at it, it just looks so much better, I think, in blue. It's the overall shape of everything, I think, to me, I wasn't a big fan of the Mark I. This one has started to grow on I me. Mean, the big thing is back here with the back part of it. That kind of throws me. For some reason, it doesn't bother me so bad on the Mark II models, what it did with the Mark I. Not sure why it is. I also think it's where the top turret just has it replaced there. It just looks better. But looking here at the front, definitely can see some kind of takes from some of the... Um, like F-16, F-17 planes, uh, fighter planes that you can uh, see in the military. But I just like the way it lines up everything. So let's go ahead and open up the pilot canopy. And let's, yeah, let's open up the ladder here too. So you can see how you can get into it, kind of look at how everything goes. Let's go ahead and climb into the pilot seat here. Or actually, let's go ahead and open storage first. So you can see you do have at least 250 uh, units of storage. I know right at the moment we can still have our backpacks and stuff on us, but in the future they have stated that they want to make it difficult to where you have stuff like that on to be able to fly the plane. So you could take the backpack off, throw it in your storage when you land, you can get all your guns, everything out, be able to actually still use it as kind of a, a get around a little bit with it as well. So that will make it to where you have some options with this uh, ship. It's not just, oh, let me go be a gunner or a ship. Just go all out and not have to worry about it taking anything with me. You, you can use a lot of this to be able to store extra stuff while you're there. So let's get into the ship here now. All right, so let everything kind of close up and then we'll get everything powered on here. Okay, so as it's all powered up, we'll kind of look around. We do have, of course, some different buttons and stuff here. Um, not a lot of interactivity here, but we do have the exit ship option here. We've got all of our MFDs and stuff kind of in the middle. Joystick controls over here on the right hand side. Same thing, not a whole lot here, but we do have the power off. And then we have the engine on off here as well. All right, going back to kind of the center area here. We got opening pilot canopies, uh, we can of course open the ladder. A few different things here. Um, and I'm not really sure what I just hit, but okay, we'll just. The, the, this is the uh, the hanger test to make sure that everything works correctly whenever you eject. And yeah, we'll. Yeah, that that's not good. Okay, let's go and look at some of the the stats of the ship. Yeah, let's let's do that. So here we got the pledge page for the F seven C Hornet as well as the F seven A. Hornet, which of course the F7A Mark II is not currently available. It does say it's in concept, but I figure once everything is done with the um, special missions and everything, you'll be able to get those, the Operation Overdrive missions. You'll be able to get that token upgraded. I don't know if it'll be immediate or not, but it, that is an option there. But going through the different options here, most of all of your avionics and components are basically identical the one big thing though on here it does say that it is a you get two small power plants on the F7C and you get one small power plant on the F7A but the actual difference here lies with the power plants the 
uh, F7C, you get two size ones, which 400 or 4,000 power each. Versus the F7A, you get one size two, which is more than double what the F7C is. So that's a big one there. Now, granted, yes, you can upgrade it and get quite a bit of power out of the F7C, but you're not going to quite match what you can do with the upgrade on the Mark uh, the F7A. It's just too much of a difference there. You want to make sure that, that you do take that into account. The other things with them are the weapons and the turrets and things like that. Yes, on the F7C, you do have the two guns uh, factory. They're both laser repeaters, but they're not putting out a whole, whole lot of uh, DPS sustained or anything. Decent amount of burst, but you're not looking at a lot of sustained DPS. You're also only looking at those two guns right off hand, so you definitely want to do some upgrades on that if you can. Now, of course, you can immediately go right with a size 3 turret right off the bat, just throw on like a Mantis 220. Definitely going to be a big upgrade. Starting off 1311 sustained, burst 2080. Fairly good. But there are better options here. And of course, that's not even taking into account the top turret at all. So, the 7A, of course, you've already got your front turret, you've got all your turrets, and you've got the wing turrets there, or the wing guns there as well. It's already right off the bat a huge, huge difference. Uh, 3,344 DPS, bursting at 4,700. Now, if you go and change everything out, it's where it kind of starts getting a little bit of fun. I, of course, went on Reddit, just one of the random ones I found, said to do 380 48s and two yellow jackets or dead vaults, either one, onto it. That's all ballistic damage, and it'll start filling up all these here. Now, this isn't taking into account any of the missiles or anything, but it gives you a definite idea of what you can do with these uh, ships. So, if we go and assign all this, and I'll run through it all. So, after adding some guns um, that I used on the Reddit page that I found, kind of getting an idea of what can be done, this still may not be the best option, but it works worked for me when I was messing around with it. Adding the S7C nose turret instead of just the gun onto it will allow you to add the two yellow jackets, which right off the bat, there's 1,088 sustained DPS. Switching out the um, SCU pack for the specialty Veripack S5, which will allow you to add an S a size 4 gun currently, which all this may change in the future as well. Might be able to add bigger guns there. Um, I know I'd heard something to mention whenever the new combat changes and everything comes into play. This all may change, so just take it with a grain of salt for the time being. But switching out everything else for the 84B uh, Ballistic Gatlings, and of course the two Yellow Jackets, you're looking right off the bat at a huge jump up to 51 a uh, thousand almost 5200 or 5100 almost 5200 sustained dps and burst is the same which is extraordinarily high considering what you started off with now if you switch over to the f7a kind of adjusting the guns there with the mantises and the 84bs there you still have more there but you're looking at a lot of more of a difference between them uh, 5933 versus the basically 5200 still a decent amount but it's not nearly as much of a huge jump between them as what it originally was so you can if you don't uh have the capability or are unable to do the uh operation overdrive missions i'm not always in with other people that i normally play with so it's, it can be sometimes hard to be able to do those you can still get the f7c up quite a bit now, to get this ship, right off the bat, you're looking at $160 war bond or $175 uh, store credit or without being a war bond. So, it does give you some options. I'm not telling you to go out and buy the ship because it's your money. Do what you want to do with it. You will be able to earn this in game at a later time as well. Usually, it's about three months or when the next patch drops is usually when you can actually get the ship in game 
So that's entirely up to you, however you want to go about doing it. But you can see that it is definitely an excellent ship to work with. Use it to your advantage. You'll be able to do quite a bit of things. Currently, it is one of the better for uh, like bounty hunting, things like that, ship to ship combat. It is one of the better ones. So definitely try it out if you get a chance. But that is all that I have today. So I will catch you in the next one.